Now we've talked about the, pre the parents of psychology. So who was the first person to actually formalize psychology as an academic discipline? Well, to that, we'll look to the early pioneers. And although we're in North America right now, it's important to understand that the first person who coined the phrase psychology was in Europe. And this was a man by the name of William Wundt or William Wundt. And so William Wundt, uh, according to some historical records, he was not a very likable person in his youth. Uh, he uh, experienced some great illnesses in his childhood. He was a bit feeble and weak in adolescence. And when he wanted to go to graduate school to study medicine, he had a hard time being accepted to programs. It was only through family connections that he was actually able to go and study medicine. That being said, he earned a graduate degree in medicine. And when he wanted to start his new medical lab, he wanted to study a new area of medicine. And that was the study of consciousness. And so he used the Greek words psyche and logos to name this area of medicine psychology. And he deemed himself the very first psychologist. So his research lab opened in 1879 and the type of psychology he was interested in was understanding how we think. Rather than looking at the mechanics of the body, he wanted to understand what is happening in the mind. And he developed this process uh, of understanding things through structuralism. So structuralism is the idea that Wundt and his research assistants would try to examine the specific particles of the mind. This is the idea that you would try and sit in a chair in a sparsely decorated research lab and you would try to identify everything you're conscious of right now. What you're hearing and seeing and smelling, tasting, feeling, but also your emotions, your senses of hunger, your senses of temperature, any memories fluctuating in your mind, any songs that you have that maybe some earworms, anything going on. And so he was interested in identifying the components or particles of consciousness. And one of the main mechanisms he developed for this was the methodology called introspection. And so introspection was the idea that you would sit there and it would be a relatively quiet room and you would attempt to verbalize everything you're thinking of as fast as you can. And there would be a trained research assistant who would be transcribing this. And then different, um, different transcriptions would be taken to see how different people were thinking of the similar things. And so I want you to think about what introspection would involve. I want to give you an opportunity to try introspection right now. So sit calmly and try to reflect on everything you are consciousness, everything you are conscious of right now. Is it easy to do? Did I interrupt you? You can keep going if you want after this video, but some of you may have really enjoyed it. Some of you said, okay, now I can now I can reflect on everything around me. Some of you may have been very stressed out by this. It might have been something that flummoxed you and just felt uneasy. For myself, I was thinking about the hot lights on me right now, my web camera, how I almost toppled my microphone. Uh, but there's so much more you could go to. You could think about your to-do list. You could think about your past. You could think about what's happening on your cell phone right now. Do you think you were successful in capturing everything? That might be hard to do. Think critically if you think introspection would be a sound scientific methodology or if it would be problematic. That's something to reflect on. So after Wundt's work in Europe, uh, many Americans crossed the Atlantic to work with him. And two Americans in particular, G. Stanley Hall and William James, were responsible for taking psychology from Europe over to North America. G. Stanley Hall, the G stands for Granville, is actually uh, noted for being the first person to develop an American psychology research lab. So he started the first lab on this side of the Atlantic. He also started the first psychology journal. And so this was the first periodical scientific journal uh, publishing scientific experiments. He also uh, founded the American Psychology Association, uh, or American Psychological Association rather. And so this is the body of society in which psychologists gather to publish. Now, an interesting note about G. Stanley Hall, if you go on the uh, website academictree.org, you'll actually find that if you follow G. Stanley Hall's um, people, you can actually see that six degrees away, I find myself. 
So not only is he the grandfather of psychology in North America, there's many North American psychologists today that can find themselves six degrees or less away from G. Stanley Hall. Now he mainly wrote about eugenics and child development, um, but another person we need to talk about is that of William James. So William James, very religious man, very intro, into spiritualism and seances and um, uh, haunted houses of the day, that, that uh, 19th century spiritism in the US. And what he was interested in was trying to reconcile his spiritual and Christian beliefs with scientific beliefs introduced to him through psychology. And unlike Gustav Fechner, he was able to resolve this conflict. And he was able to resolve this conflict through the notion of pragmatism. This is the idea that one doesn't have to be only Christian or only a scientist. He recognized that when he was in the science lab, he was going to focus on his scientific beliefs. And when he was at church, he was going to focus on his Christian beliefs. And he had to recognize that some of his Christian beliefs didn't make sense in the science lab. And some of his scientific beliefs didn't make sense in church. And pragmatism is the idea of accepting that these things don't always make sense. He also further established the idea that we would focus on individual differences, how individuals varied. Whereas in Europe, the idea was more focused on universal theories that explained a psychological phenomena for all people. And so William James did uh, learn about structuralism with Wundt, but he had some criticisms of structuralism and instead proposed the idea of functionalism. And so functionalism is another examination of consciousness, but rather than trying to examine all the particles of consciousness, it was the idea that consciousness is like a fast flowing river. We can't stop the river to identify all the particles. So instead, it's more important to identify why does the river flow the way it does? Why does it bend when it bends? And so James's ideas were more focused on why do we focus on sounds over other sounds? Why do we focus on sounds of voices rather than the sound of a computer running? Why do we pick up on certain types of smells? Why do we prefer some smells to others? How do we make decisions if there's a tough decision? What do we think about? And what is the purpose of us having consciousness anyway? What do we gain from it? Are animals also conscious? And so functionalism and structuralism started to vary in these questions. And what this led to was there was a bit of a divide between North America and Europe in terms of the goals of psychology. In Europe, we tended to see a more philosophical branch, a more qualitative branch that was talking about things unique to all humans. And structuralism was the main methodology versus in North America, it was quickly becoming more of a scientific endeavor focused on publishing empirical results and looking at functionalism, explaining the why or the what. Now, in terms of which side of the Atlantic um, won, in terms of which side became a dominant form of psychology, this was greatly influenced by the next person we're going to talk about.